That's that simple. But then, then if I come back to that period, so you were a high school student at that right. time, and then you kind of uh, had a chance to work on these things very early on, and what happened then? Right, yes, so I mean like I guess we, we, we discussed about the competition and like uh, luckily enough um, I, I, I kind of uh, I did well enough in the, in the, in the kind of this young scientist competition that um, but then I, I, I won this won this to kind of share second prize and as a part of the prize um, they, they promised to kind of give a tour how a real scientists actually do their work yes. and, and at the time of course the kind of the leading leading research group uh, like was the Kohoven uh, research group around self-organizing map Yes, and uh, and I, I I got a chance to visit visit like researchers there, which was of course like a, I was really really happy and I was very excited about the <laughs> opportunity and and like I, I remember having like a very lively vivid discussions. I remember talking about, for instance, how we could um how we could like train these machines, how we could apply machine learning to to play some computer games. Yes, and uh, of course it was kind of a far fetched silly idea at the time, and I'm also very happy to see that like that seems to be an active area of like research these days. No, so, yeah. yes. So there are uh, kind of uh, these things take a long time often, so that yeah. uh, that it may be that the roots are even decades before. Absolutely, yeah, yeah it times. definitely takes patience. So, so and then then you uh, started to study. You started to study computer science at yeah. the University of Helsinki. That's right. Well, even even before that, I mean, I I got like a chance to work at the, at the University of Oulu at the Computer Vision Lab. Okay, yes. For, right. was, it, was it, I do I re, uh, remember right that it was some EU project even? Or? Yes, they did have a, like a few. And actually another extremely fascinating thing at the time, and this was 99, was that of course uh, Nokia was really active in Oulu at the time. Yes. And uh, I, I remember also like uh, like some Nokia people coming in and like kind of a, a sharing their vision about the future, having collaboration projects. And like one of the things they were demoing were actually camera phones. And, like, oh, okay. And then yes. they were saying that like one day, I mean, uh, all photos will be taken with these with mobile phones, which yes. seemed like totally mind blowing at the time. And then like then imagine if you had corpora and corpora of these images, what you could do. Yes. And it was an extremely far fetched idea, but I mean, it, it was it obvious was that if something like that was preparing for the future. Exactly. Yes. And I have to say that like the Nokia, they really had a really crisp vision of the future. Yes. Uh, so, but it's a pity that they kind of failed in exactly. so, regarding so, some it, aspects. It, at least it wasn't a lack of ideas. Yes. <laughs> And the people there really had a genius, genial kind of yeah, thoughts. Absolutely, yes. smart people. Yes. So, but it, there were other reasons, and right. but that that would be a kind of another story. So absolutely, let's not yeah. start to uh, go into <laughs> yeah. that too much here. And so uh, then you actually, so we were working together for a couple of years in this company called Kurusoft, which yeah. was then trying to make the self-organizing maps uh, being used to document kind of... Well ahead of its time. So. <laughs> yes, too much ahead of the time, <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. And now it's kind of, I have to say personally, that I uh, feel that some things are feel, I feel that they are really boring when all these same things are done mm. again and again. And so uh, when I was having the problem that I was lying in the hospital mm. and then needed to kind of come back to the world, luckily having been able to do that, so then uh, these uh, methods that were kind of making the texts and words to be transformed into numerical kind of representations. Yes. So like we were doing together in the uh, some, is it almost 20 years ago. Mm, so and yeah. then when I came back from the hospital and so on, so I heard some words and I was wondering are there some new innovations? <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, maybe you can explain <laughs> what had happened in meanwhile there when I was kind of... So what what were the bacterial representations about the words and... Yeah, no, I mean, you mean the kind of the answer that you gave me at the time or...? Yeah, yes, and nowadays, so when I came in and I was kind of, I was being told that there are these and these things and so that's that's something but if you could characterize what had happened meanwhile when I was kind of away in practice for a couple of uh, years so what what were the kind of terminologies oh that's right yeah so uh, I, I had been I had been like over the past like a five years like working working like in, in like in the different uh, like fields of applied machine learning and, and like of course now I mean people are very actively like for instance using natural language processing and like Maybe I, I think it was maybe a few years back that the whole idea of word embeddings 
yes. it started to be like a really a big thing and like people became really excited especially about the about the fact that um, you can take almost any corpus of, of natural language and like you take the context of the words, the words yes. and you model them and like suddenly actually like it seems that the, the results you get like from any kind of like a simple model that you apply to this representation seem to make a lot of sense yes and then and, and this this felt really mind-blowing and it felt that we must be really close to artificial intelligence now that like kind of the, the world yes, seems and to the be word. taking shape and the term so word embedding was something that i learned from my colleague yes when i came back to the university then i was kind of thinking that they were people were enthusiastic and i thought that this is now something new and great and then i started a little bit kind of go down exactly yeah no i, I remember was it like when, when did you publish the paper about the fairy tales and then 95 95 it's yes. amazing yeah and it's basically the very same idea yes and yes then, like e even the idea of like uh, taking the random projections of this context yes. and like yes. i mean it's, it's really the same idea and then applying self-organizing maps as a way to to model the, the, the manifold of the data so yes yes and of course i mean like well on the on the one hand it's the same thing of course i mean there are like some some advancements and like maybe it's more computationally more efficient of course, and, uh, of course. and so forth but so the basic ideas definitely. seem to be the same yeah. and that's why i was so happy that in the 1980s when i had been working seriously on this kind of traditional symbolic ai rule-based ai and then what happened then after uh, that I kind of realized that this really doesn't work so it has to be data driven and machine learning and then I found uh, Kohonen's work and started to work on that and right. program myself C program which was yeah. one of the yeah. kind of ma major tools at that time the self-organizing map al algorithm and started to make my first experiments with right. that and then luckily I was invited the same way to Kohonen's laboratory then after working some years on these matters but I really didn't have the context strong enough for this work and that's why it was great to have a chance to work with Teuvo Kohonen and then right. Samuel Kaski and Crystal August then came to from VTT with me to, to, to work on this and that was yeah. very kind of... It was really trailblazing it, work at it, the it, time. It, it was really something yeah. and I have to say that regarding multi-layer perceptrons and so on so uh, I had this kind of uh, insight that multi-layer approach has to be the mm -hmm. solution and that's why this Webson basic first algorithm, uh, the kind of architecture that we were working on having word level and then document level kind of right. being each after each other. So that was my idea in the already quite early on in the 1990s right. where I thought that we have to be able to kind of learn different levels of representation that's right yeah. and and but uh, of course i didn't really kind of get through there yeah so that the, the kind of current deep learning approach is of course more than what i had but then i'm kind of happy that i had the basic insight that it has to be a multi-layer absolutely approach. and i have to say that of course the big difference is that in a way, I mean, the work around self-organizing maps was oftentimes, I mean, maybe even more ambitious. That's actually what's being done today. Yes, it is unsupervised learning, whereas like all the recent advancements have been mainly in the field of supervised learning, mm. which can be uh, posed as a very clear optimization problem. Yes, and then like I mean, once you have a really uh, easily quantifiable goal, and like you can apply different methods, and then then you get the get the desired result. I mean, still, I mean, it's a very much of an open question how you how you learn these representations yes. in a truly unsupervised manner. And that's why, for example, our old-time friend uh, Harry Valpola has been keen on trying to push exactly. this. Exactly, I think that that is still the kind of the, the ambitious end goal. Yes, yes, and there are kind of the whole system, but multiple level of abstraction and right. and regarding language, the individuals and the society and, and different cultures and so on. So that's what I'm keen on and they yeah. are kind of there is uh, work for the next hundred years or whatever yeah. so yeah this so that's that's another question but um, I would say that now it's time to see how this has been kind of going on for this moment so I thank you very much thank for you. this this and let's oh, let's see pleasure. thank you